have the hitches on. We just got to do the lights. And there are no good instructions on how to do the lights. So they show the little, little lights there and the bigger lights on the back. Um, L brackets on the holding the back ones and then a license plate bracket on that side. Alright, the problem I got is the wire doesn't come out the middle of the light um, like they're expecting it to from this pattern of holes. They're expecting the wire to come out right out the middle. Uh, this light, it comes out the side. If I move it over to the middle, then it's going to squeeze down on the wiring when I tighten up the bolt to put the, lamp, the light on. So uh, I'm going to space this out with a couple of washers so there's not so much pressure on the uh, on the light on the wiring. All right, so these rear tail lights. The left one and the right one. So this one will be on the right side of the car. Just pointing out, pointing back. And the one on the other side. Don't get them mixed up because this one's got a clear glass here with LEDs pointing down to light up the license plate. So again, it will go like that, just on the side of the car, on the far side of the trailer. Alright, next problem. Not enough bolts, I had to go scrounge some up. I found some cap heads and some with lock nuts, so this will finish her up. I was short by two. Uh, we got the harness and we got a little bag of electrical clips and other little and little uh, cable clips to hold them onto the trailer and a few screws. You can get a connector that goes on to your car too. But Okay, I don't like what they've done here. They've uh, just given us wires for the um, the hot side lights. So we have a left turn, right turn, and two running lights that will feed back to the uh, to the tail lights. And then we have to splice into those to get the other two running lights up at the front, the brown ones. Um, and then the white wires here, we're supposed to tie them to the chassis ground and use the chassis as a ground. Um, I would be happy to do this if the trailer was all welded together but it's just bolted together so the trailer so the chassis ground is not really going to be that great especially with the powder coating on this chassis so I think I'm going to try and find some wire and run a ground wire so the kit came with these little things um, run your wires in them and then crimp it down with a pair of pliers um, the idea is you would run, I think you can split it apart, maybe, with 
screwdriver, run your wire unimpeded through there, and then run your, your wire you want to split off through the second hole, and then crimp it down, and that, that'll get you a, a connection. I don't particularly like these things. They're not waterproof, they're gonna corrode. You're gonna have lighting problems when you, when you, when you're uh, trying to use your trailer which is always the worst time. It's always raining or something's always going on. So I'm not gonna use these things. I'm gonna use uh, um, some different things, some different butt splices. I'm gonna re rewire a little bit. So I'm gonna run the uh, running lights from the front of the trailer back to the back of the trailer where I'm only making one connection back to the, to the main trunk going up to the uh, connector. Um, and then I also need to run a second ground wire up, so hopefully I have enough wire. These are the butt splices I'm going to be using. These are the common ones you can buy at the auto, auto parts store. Um, these are a little less common, um, but they're way cooler. So you crimp them down the same way, except you heat these up with your heat gun. And they shrink down and there's glue inside here so it glues to the wire so not only does that help help us with the you know it pulling loose from your crimp also seals it up for so water can't get into your connection so i only i don't have very many of these but i i'm going to use them for the most part in the most critical connections and then i'll use these ones where i uh where the connections the, usually the ground connections that aren't going to be so critical Okay, so you can crimp these guys with uh, wire strippers like this. They usually have a spot that tells you crimp it, crimp the blues, the reds, or the yellows. Here, I don't particularly like using these to crimp these. I have a better pair of crimpers. Here's my better pair of crimpers. Similar thing. Red, blue, yellow. Away you go. Through these ratchet. And they actually make two crimps. So they crimp the insulation and they crimp the and they crimp the connector. So these are the ones I'm gonna be using. Wire. Get it all started. Get it stuffed in there. So I stuffed the entire strip piece of wire up in the up in the metal piece.
Okay, this picture shows how they intend you to wire the trailer based on the stuff they gave you in the kit. This scheme requires that there's a good ground connection through the frame, but this frame is uh, bolted together and uh, all the metal's powder coated, so I seriously doubt there's a good ground connection on the frame. Um, so I chose to do it a different way. Okay, this drawing shows how I chose to wire the trailer. I have ground connections at all the same points, but they're also tied together with uh, copper wire. This is not the way I would choose to do it. Once I was done, I realized that it made a, a nasty mess up at the neck of the trailer. So I think I would do it differently a second time. So this is how I would wire the trailer if I had to do it again. I would bring all the wires down to one side of the trailer and then fish it across the back of the trailer to the other side. Um, this would clean up the, the neck of the trailer so there would only be one wire um, coming down the trailer and I wouldn't have it lying and, and going down the trailer in two separate paths. Uh, I think this would look a lot neater and it would um, definitely make the ground connections a lot easier to do. Um, it's the same amount of ground connections but there's um, fewer wires going in each one and I, I think it would just be a lot cleaner and, and easier. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Okay, here's the uh, trailer. You can see I had to drill a bunch of bolts here, and I put uh, I put little uh, nylon hooks in there to hold the wire better. And uh, this is the mess up at the up at the neck of the trailer where the uh, wires Y out down each side, which I think I would do differently if I had to do it again. 
Um, there's a little issue with the wires here um, where, it, where it folds. Um, having to go around that fold, but it's not that bad. Um, the other thing I added was I added a, a bolt here um, with a nylon locker um, that just to hold the chain on so that if the chain ever falls loose, ever comes loose, uh, it doesn't fall off the trailer. And uh, that's about it. Okay, so this comes with the VIN number right here. Clearly says VIN, and then it's got a number stamp there. But that's not good enough for the state I live in. So they uh, provided me with a with a new VIN number that I need to weld onto the trailer. I didn't want to go to the uh, to all the trouble of explaining to the to the woman at the DMV that. I couldn't actually weld aluminum onto the steel trailer. So uh, I'm just going to rivet it on, of course. You can't weld aluminum to steel. And there we go. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I'm also on Patreon.